So they were the V and the I of the VIPs. <laughs> Obviously, the P's had other things to do. Um, uh, a lot of times in the in the VIP things, we do like a little Q and A so that you guys can ask us some questions. I will say this: though. it is always nice to ask the questions, like you know, um, if you really enjoyed voicing the you know Squirtle. But here's an opportunity to ask us a lot of things that maybe are like, you know, behind the scenes, stuff like that, and just pick our brains a little bit beyond just the, maybe the standard question. So think about what you can ask us as I stroke my chin. So if anybody's got any questions, they can come up to this fantastically centered microphone here in the middle. Does anybody have that? No, no, just so I can hear you, so that everyone can hear you. Everyone is staring at us right now. Yeah. Anybody? Well, if anybody doesn't know, I'm, I'm Tiffany. I'm Tiffany Grant. So Yay! I guess you know that if you're here. I'm a voice actor, scriptwriter. That's there Eric we. Stewart. Sorry. You're here. It's not like he has a. Oh, he does have a wound a problem. No. <laughs> Better late than never. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna give Todd. I'm gonna give Todd. Todd's gonna give Todd. Even have a broken foot. And uh, yes, I, I'm Eric Stewart, and uh, I, I do I do stuff too. I do voice <laughs> acting and music and directing and all of that. So uh, yeah, see now we've got V I, and then P is still late. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, as uh, Quentin gets himself situated. All set. Win, everybody. Hey, everybody! Yeah. So, do you guys have any questions you want to ask? Anybody want to raise a hand and get up on that microphone and ask a question? Come on. Nothing? Anybody? Oh, yes, oh, you! Yes. Come on, let's do it all official now. Get your, get your mic right there. Hot mic. Hot. It's hot. I love your work. Thanks, Axel. And I love your work. James. <laughs> Thank you very much. And um, I was wondering, well, how many times did you have to say God in your eyes? Uh, 1,437. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's only at conventions. Um, I don't remember in the recording process, actually. Any guess? You could make it a contest, like one of those, you know, guess how many jelly beans is in the jar. Exactly. <laughs> but then someone would have to actually count. So that's you don't true. Really answer. We'll try to figure it out by the end of the convention. Thank you very much. Cool. You have a question. Come on. Come on up there. Come on. Get on that Okay. Line. So, I have a request for Axel. As a Yowie fan girl, I have to ask you, would you confess your love to Roxas? I don't know why this is such a thing. <laughs> I mean, you guys dig it, but I don't. To me, they're just pals. <laughs> Roxas, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You'll have to forgive me. This is my morning coffee. Oh, and a con. That was it. <laughs> oh, I see. I was all ready to answer that for It's going to be a voiceover question. Um, weirdest, most embarrassing thing I've been asked to do in a con. Well, I got, I got auctioned. Well, you got auctioned last year, right? I got, I got auctioned off for a, like a date one time at a convention. It was a platonic, like a, a dinner date thing, but it, that, that was a little weird. Yeah. Sign private body parts? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I didn't even think about that. I spent four years on the road with a rock and roll band and the over 18 panel, I'll tell you all of those stories. 
but in conventions, nothing really shocks me because I spent four years on the road with a rock and roll man. <laughs> oh, it's about time. And you know, it was it's like it's like I, there's, there's fashion really late, and then there's it's like, not like you got a oh well, I guess I'll arm. go to that party. There's a breast cancer awareness run that shut down every major freeway. So we're moving along at LA speed. Like and and Romney's here for, for a big thing too. Yeah. yeah. That's, no, really? Yes. Yeah. He's here yeah, for Romney a huge rally. Town, right now, think, uh, well, that's where, the, that's where the cops were doing their thing on the other side there. Because they were blocking off everything. Like I thought when we were talking about zombie apocalypse last night. Yeah. I'm like, oh, it's happening right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I apologize. I'm sorry. We tried to, we're like, oh, this we got plenty of time. We're driving along and it's like, Bird. And, and those do look Wait, there were zombies, there was a breast cancer run, and Mitt Romney? I guess so, because everyone's wearing pink, so again, we're feeling horrible because we're not wearing yeah, pink. Yeah. Well, my, my underwear is pink, but not anything you can see. And so, everyone's wearing pink, everyone's supporting breast cancer. And there's we a fall festival. Yeah, 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 see? And, and the car wash. Mm. Oh, and the car wash. Kids doing oh, car wash. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of, I was almost thinking about stopping and doing that, actually. That looked like something that my car could use. Um, all right, do we have any other, this is Todd. Hi, guys. Hi. Start lining up. Yes, you have a question. Just run come on. up to that Come microphone. on down. Yeah, line on up. That microphone looks Yeah, you don't over. even have to raise your hand. Just get up and just go to the microphone. Uh, you can't do the same ones. You guys can line up at the microphone. Come on. Should there be a need of a line. Bring it. Bring it. Um, Todd. Yeah. How would you feel if uh, Funimation actually gets the um, licensing for the new OVA for Kenichi? Oh man, that would be fun. Nijimo was a lot of fun to do, and Kenichi is this uh, mightiest disciple. It's this fighting show, and I play this character that's like an alien, a cross between an alien and Spock with a a very pronounced bowl haircut, which I relate to because I had that when I was a child. Of course, coming from Asian descent, you got to have the bowl haircut. It's a rite of passage. And um, I thought it was the closest I would get to giving a little homage to the Joker, Mark Hamill's Joker, because he's a very conniving character that laughs all the time. And, and uh, it would be great if we got the OVA. A lot of people really enjoyed that show, and I, I, I liked working on it. So a lot of times uh, with a question like that, people, and I'm sure they've asked, they ask you guys all the time, is like, if this show came, would you work on it? Uh, and I think, yeah. we, I think it's like, we're ready. We're always ready to right. rock. Yeah, so we're like little voiceover mercenaries. Yes. <laughs> you know, we're Ronin. We don't have a, a master, so we roam the voiceover land looking for microphone masters. So. Do, do you ever get that? Any of you guys, like when someone calls to book you for a job, and instead of just like, we want to book you, that they, that they actually ask you if you want to do it? Oh, all the like, time, yeah. It's like, it's like what no. the hell is wrong with you? Of course I'm going to do I'm ready it. to rock. Yeah. yeah, I'm just sitting here playing SpongeBob Monopoly. I'm, I'm ready to do it. So. That's, that's his vocal warm up. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you remember that thing that you auditioned for? So, do you want to do that? Yes. Of course. Well, good question. Good question. All right. Of course, it? I want to do the work. I want to come into your booth and record. Hey, Todd, could you give us a little of that character? Oh, Nijima? So, uh, he talks a little bit like this, and then he has a laugh. And then he tops and types into his little quantum leap ziggy thing. I don't know if you guys remember that show. Yes. Well, it never works. You gotta hit it on the side and then it works again. It's kind of like a Volvo. So. <laughs> Excellent. Good. Good. Did you have a question? Come on down. Good morning, and thank you everybody for showing up. Yeah. Sure. Uh, this is a question for most of you. Uh, I was just wondering, which you find to be easier, voice acting for anime or for uh, video games? and which do you enjoy more to do? Hmm. Where are we starting? I like, I like Quentin's voice acting in video games because then we wouldn't have Raiden if he didn't do that. So <laughs> anyway, you guys go ahead. Good. Um, well, you know, with voice acting, the, the two sides of the voice acting, for me, either doing prelay stuff or doing uh, ADR, uh, matching someone else's lip lap, um, I prefer prelay acting so that I can read it the way it should be read, um, and and that's fun. Video games burn me out; they they blow me out. Yelling and screaming the same fifteen you know calls out over and over again. Yeah. Um, you know that that's that's tough. Um, especially uh, we did a lot of games where the 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 Japanese creator would be in the room with us. Um, and to get the kind of direction 
It's, well, you've won, but you're being hurt, and there's, uh, you know, your, your, your wife is being taken away, and this and that, and the word is, ugh. Yeah. So, like, when that, and you're just like, I, I, I gotta go. Like, can I just do, like, 15 of these in a row? And then, and then you, just, you just go, he got it on, like, number 12. And so that, that can burn you out. Um, but I prefer prelay voice acting, you know, to, uh, to all that stuff. Well, I, I've actually only done like a couple of video games, but I, I think uh, it, to me the thing that's, I mean, it's, it's easy in the sense that you're not mashing lip flaps, but it's just so disjointed because there's not really a story because there's like 50 different possibilities of, of what might happen. So like you said, it's just like all these call outs, but it, it, you're not telling an actual like one story, so in that respect, I guess I like anime better, even though there is the lip flap mashing, but at least it makes sense. And games do sometimes pay pretty well. That's like, true, I like that part. I mean, I like there is a difference funny. in that. You, yes, know, you come in for a day's good. work and you're like, okay, that was a good chunk of change. Um, so that's kind of nice, where, you know, some of the series go on and on forever and you got enough for gas, so there you go. <laughs> yes. What about you, Quinn? Yeah. Yeah, I prefer uh, video games over anime just for the reason that, uh, uh, at least in my experience, there's been more dialogue these days, mm -hmm. I've had less yelling, and, um, you know, mostly original uh, recordings where they're, they've got a video camera on us and they're, mm -hmm. you know, animating it to us later. There is some dubbing in that as well, but uh, as opposed to ADR, which um, you know, it takes, takes some skill, for sure, mm -hmm. but the pay's not as great. I think, right. for me, uh, so one time I, there's this video game called Rage, I don't know if you guys have heard of that. It's, uh, by the guys that made Doom. And so I, I am, uh, I went in and I did this game, and, um, there's a lot of yelling. So a lot of war games have yelling, like Black Ops 2 and things like that, and, uh, you know, uh, brothers in arms and stuff. There's a lot of yelling. It's just like, again, like what you're saying. What he's talking about is when you, they ask for 15 of those, that your lines are set up like a spreadsheet. And so you have all your reactions, all your deaths, all your death. So the director's sitting there with like a, about this many people to direct a video game. You got like five writers and producers and the director and the engineer, and they want to pass a three. They want three different versions, something, and they're going to pick which one they like. And so, yeah, it's literally like, okay, you just jumped on a bomb and you died. And then you're like, you have to give the, and then you're like, okay, now you're on fire. Okay, three of those. You just got stabbed. Yeah, stuff like that. You were shot. You were decapitated. It's the weirdest, just all that, and there's no, there's no picture. To sometimes, you know, if it's prelay, sometimes there's no, there's no animation, there's no picture. So you're just literally staring at a spreadsheet and coming up with it in your head. And then I think back, I'm like, yes, all those years I operated my microwave without being able to shut the door. All those nuclear waves are feeding my imagination. So, so that brain damage really helps me in the recording booth. But I was working on Rage, and, uh, and I was in the booth, and it was, uh, so it was 315 lines. But you have to do th that three times. Each of those lines three times. Fighting reactions, deaths, all that stuff. Within the first 15 minutes, I'm exhausted and sweating because the voice is so weird like this. And so that yelling. And so the, so the first 15 minutes, I'm soaked, I'm drenched. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, like I got in the swimming pool with my clothes on. Um, and so, uh, like a Friday night in college. But uh, anyway, so what happened was I'm really sweaty. And I told the director, I said, hey, listen, I know this is gonna get weird, but, it, but I'm freezing because my clothes are soaked, it, it, but I'm burning up. And can I just take you know, my, can I record without my shirt on? Is that okay? And they said, okay, uh, all right. Because there's a camera watching you and you're, you're watching the, the engineer and stuff. And so it got a little weird because technically I recorded topless. And so, um, after that session, I lost my voice for nine days because of all the yelling. I could not speak for nine days, and I thought it was over. I thought I was, I thought, I'm like, oh, this is how you turn into a zombie. You get a fever, you start to get cold when you're hot, you lose your voice, and you crave flesh. So um, I thought that's what was happening. But yeah, the video games can really tear you up. That's why, you know, we, they were talking about the compensation for it. It's because they know that they're destroying your voice in a very short period of time. When you're working on a video game, for a four hour session, you really, if it's a war game, you can't really do another session for the rest of the day. You know? and, yeah, and if you get, and if you, and if every once in a while you pull a little bit of sort of a, a prima donna thing and say, um, 
I'm not, I'm not doing this for more than four, two hours today. You, we can split this session up. Because yeah, I mean, there have been sessions where I've been like, you want me to, yeah. Because I do a lot of games that of course are based on card games. I mean, all the Yu-Gi-Oh stuff. So that's always calling out and yelling commands. So I would say we can do an hour today and then we can do an hour tomorrow, but I'm not doing like two hours and then two hours, you're gonna kill me. Because that's the thing. We, we make these choices sometimes for these characters not uh, uh, not thinking, oh, you know. I remember I, I played Dr. Z on Dinosaur King, which is kind of like that crazy voice you were just doing before, and I was told when I was auditioning for it, oh, he says like five or six things in each episode. Then we started to do the show, and he screams like that for monologues. And, I, and whenever I would get booked for those that, that show, I'd say to the director, how many lines we got? We can do this in two days. Not, we're not doing this in one day, because it'll blow you out. But the video games always do that. Yes. Uh, for Todd, in Lane's voice, can you confess your love for Edward Elric? Oh, I love Edward Elric, especially when he cooks for me and there's a whole plate of food right there. Now, if there's a Philosopher's Stone, I am going to eat that first, but I do love Ed, even though he's tiny and he's a short stack. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, ouch. Why do you love to hurt me? Oh, okay, good. Thank you. Great, great, great. All right, who's going to get up to the microphone and ask a question? You are in the box. <laughs> kind of like the bento box last night. Are oh, you a no, box of tomato fairy? Oh, very good. Nice. It's for Todd. Could you say something totally random in the Italian voice? Well, right now I'm thinking of something totally random, and if I had time, I would get up and do something totally random, like run from there, and I would hop up like this, and I would walk on top of the ceiling and do crazy things and readjust the lights so that they look at you, and then I would say, basta! <laughs> That's kind of random. Yes, you have a question, but you need to come up to the special microphone. Yeah. Because our, our sound man set that up because he's, he's on it. Yeah. Tiffany. Yes, uh, huh? Can you give me your opinion on Ben and Asuka's voice? On... What? On ben, <laughs> ben from Adventure Time, like if you were like Shinji from Evangelion. Imagine you're talking to Shinji from Evangelion. Just give me your. Okay, opinion. that's good because I don't know who Finn is. I'm so sorry. That's <laughs> okay. Hey, Finn, I don't know who the hell you are, but you're probably an idiot. <laughs> that's what she said to me when I first met her. I was like, I, I went to elementary school. Good, good, all right, good question. We got what are you, stupid? <laughs> there you go. I know all about your little you know watch fantasies about me, Finn. I'm gonna bring that up with Finn and with HR. I was gonna say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so I don't have any Yaoi or Yuri questions. But I'm out of here, that's good. Yeah. That, that segment has. I was promised so. Yaoi. <laughs> Okay, so if you had to voice another voice actor's character, who would it be? This is like general. It would be a hard one. Uh, mine's not a hard one at all. Because if you know me at all and you've seen my car and its floor mats and the cowl in the back yes. window, I would play Batman. <laughs> yes. but, but I could never touch Kevin because he's the unbelievable best voice of Batman. But I do a very good Christian Bale. Um, and, the, and the thing is, with Christian Bale um, and having that speech impediment, I can do that. <laughs> so yeah, no, Batman. I, I would love to play Batman. That's least, my ultimate. At least you're coherent, unlike Christian Bale. Swear to me! <laughs> oh, I, I, I think, uh, you know, Ed Elric, right, yeah. No, definitely. <laughs> All right. No, that's it. No, I don't, have, I don't have a real answer. I don't know. I'd like to play all of Todd's roles. <laughs> oh, damn, I was going to say, I want to play I record pantsless now. Um, I guess I would like to be a... Uh, I'd like to be Spongebob, you know? Why? Good one, Gary! You know, like, it's the best day ever! You know, something like that, I don't know. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. Or maybe, maybe a little, like, meow, like, meow. Maybe be Gary, uh, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it's fine. No one knows Spongebob, eh? Yeah, you notice how we both didn't answer with anime. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's true. Right. Okay, I would like to voice Edward Elric. Hey, I said it first. Oh, okay. I would like to be your your fighting reactions. Then. Okay. There we go. There we go. Just the fighting reaction. Yeah, I was thinking. I don't know. <laughs> Homer Simpson. Oh yeah. <laughs> I like beer. 
<laughs> Another classic anime. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. <know>. Spakaru. <laughs> That's good. good. The one that doesn't love me. Hello. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, my little brother is really interested in getting into voice acting, mm -hmm. and so this is kind of twofold. How did you get into voice acting? You know, what was your first role? How did you get into it? And if you could give him like one bit of advice, what would it be? Are we starting um, down at the end? Go ahead. Oh, um, well, I, I guess like a lot of a lot of other actors, I started in theater, and. Um, in, I'm, I'm from Houston, and one day uh, I got a call from somebody that this new company was going to start dubbing anime, and uh, I went down to the to the first auditions, and so I was very fortunate to get started in uh, Texas, uh, like right at the beginning. So I mean, that's how I got into it, which is completely unhelpful to your brother. Other than that, I was already an actor. So my main piece of advice to people, if I'm just giving the one piece of advice, is do it. If you want to get into acting, you should just you should do that. You should get involved in it. You should do it because that's how I found out about that first anime audition. Was that the person who called me said, "Hey, they're looking for actors," and I remembered that you're an actor. And the person who was calling me, he was not actually an actor, but he knew that they needed to find some, so. I, too, uh, began acting in school, and uh, as far as transitioning into voiceover came, I had read an ad where they were teaching voiceover workshops. So I would recommend that anybody who wants to get into the world of voiceover take voiceover yeah. workshop training. Um, specifically commercial voiceover workshop and then if they have it uh, animated or animation voiceover workshop and then you get the tools and the skills to build from there that will eventually lead you to hopefully a producer a legit producer who will make a demo for you and when you make have your demo then you can go around to um, theatrical agencies voiceover agencies rather for representation so, but it all starts with that first commercial voiceover workshop. I'll try to make this short. Um, I grew up at a tennis club. Uh, I was teaching pro. I did a lot of tennis stuff as a kid. And I, one of the members there owned a recording studio in New York and said to me, you want a job? We need an intern and, you know, an assistant. And I thought, this is great, you know, because I'm a musician and this is going to be exactly what I want. Turned out it was a voiceover studio. And um, I learned, I call it the Karate Kid School of Voice Acting. I learned from uh, cleaning the coffee pots and the, taking the garbage out, the wax on, wax off, um, and spent 10 years there um, working as a production assistant, casting director, then moved myself up. I was a producer, then I ran the studio. Um, and in that time, learned about the business by directing very, very successful voice actors in the commercial world. And hey, I started doing commercial voiceovers before I did anything like that. But I learned from a very, very, um, very wise woman who was the, my boss for, for many years, uh, the best thing I can tell you is to be an apprentice because it's a lost art. If you want to be a great carpenter, you go and find someone who is a great woodworker and you ask if you can clean up their shop and work alongside them. Always two there are. Because, exactly. Because... I learned more by being in the real world situation of the business than I could have at a school. Um, and I engineer now and I direct and I produce. I do all of that stuff because I sat there and, and absorbed like a sponge. So I will say a good piece of advice is you can still be a big fish in a small pond. I mean, I live in Nashville now, but I was a voice actor for 25 plus years in New York. That's where, you know, that's where stuff's going on, great. But how do you do this outside of there? There are still places within your area that do casting and do local spots. You've got advertising agencies, you've got radio, you've, you know, things like that. Even radio stations are great places to go and try to get an internship, not a job. Go and volunteer and say, I want to help, but in return, I want to learn. And people, and especially in this economy, economy will be quicker to say, you know what, this kid really feels like they want to get in this business. Let's bring them on. Now think, if you're your brother, right? Maybe your brother's working at a radio station and they get a script that comes in and it calls for a young pizza delivery guy in this radio spot that they need to produce in-house. And they say, what's your brother's name? Benjamin. They say, hey, isn't Benjamin interested in getting, let's give Benjamin an audition. Let's let him read for it. He's here. He's here. 
So being there is also very helpful. But yes, coaching, all of that stuff, but that all comes down the line. I think that it's, it's really a matter of just getting a sense of just what this business is about. Being on the microphone, being in a, in a studio, watching professionals do it. It's very helpful. I was watching television and a commercial came on and it says, Do you have a feminine voice? Do you watch a lot of cartoons and play video games? Well, come on down. Um, and I was like, hey, I've got a feminine voice. And so, um, actually, no, I, I had an agent and I had been working, uh, like Tiffany had mentioned, I, was, I started in theater. I started as a young child and I kept with it. And it as it, opposed it, to an old child. As an old child, yeah. You know those ones that age prematurely? Yeah, they get a lot of work, though. That's your Benjamin Button. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but... Uh, I was, uh, I had my agent and it was just uh, an audition that I didn't know what Funimation was, I didn't know what anime was, and uh, they, they brought me aboard and they didn't hate it and they didn't kick me out and they didn't end it with how my auditions usually end, which is pepper spray to the eyes, uh, <laughs> which I was ready for. I'm immune to about That's why you're wearing the dark glasses? Times. Yeah, that's spray. right. Well, also, and the thing about the dark glasses is because we go to a lot of cons, the light. There's so much, like the flashes from the, the cameras. He's a vampire. We're, we're, I'm a vampire. I, I'm, I'm looking at you, Squirtle. Mm -hmm. I want that Pokemon blood. But um, <laughs> we, we look at so much, so many flashes during these, the, the cons that I'm like, it's taking, you know, because I walked into the airport the other day and I tried to look far away. I'm like, that's fuzzy. Wait a minute. I'm like, okay, time to protect the eyes. And so, um, but I, 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 got a, I got an audition. They, they liked it. And uh, they kept me around. My first role was a tiny little blink and you'll miss it role in Peach Girl, that anime. But then shortly thereafter, like I think right after that was uh, Yamato and Suzuko, which is my first lead. Um, I, a bit of advice. Uh, well, answer me this question. How do you eat an elephant? Bam. You, got, you can't expect, see these, a lot of people that want to get into voiceover, they're like, they think step A is, I want to be a voice, voiceover artist. And then step B is, I'm a voiceover artist. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in between there. And it's not just, de you know, developing your craft is good, getting that experience. But it's a lot more than that. When you want to step into that realm, you're running your own business. You, you're, you're everything in your department. You're, you're marketing. You're your own, uh, you know, you're your own promoter. You're your own valet. You're your own worker. I mean, you have to run it all. And uh, you have to have confidence. You have to be realistic about what your skill level is and what your niche is. Best thing that you can do is if it's voiceover you want to do, sit down with some friends, watch some anime or watch some, some cartoons and, and think in your head of who you would cast yourself as. Then ask your friends, who do you think I would be cast as in that? And if the answers line up, you've got a pretty accurate view of yourself. If not, well, back to the drawing board. So, um, also, the, the most important piece of advice that I would say is if you're in my same vocal range, find something else to do. That's, that's great. That's good. Oh, and, uh, and coming from the director side, you know, I, I started directing before I was voice acting. And um, I will say that the, the most important thing is also to listen. Is mm -hmm. to actually listen mm -hmm. because, you know, I, I have people, I've, I've, done, I've done panels where I've actually heard some, some very talented voice actors say, I can do about 300 different characters, and I'm like, that's like 250 lies. You don't, we don't do that. Like, you, you don't, there, there's, unless you're like Mel Blanc, you know, you, and even Mel Blanc, you go, well, I can tell it's Mel Blanc because that sounds like Bugs Bunny. But um, they, you don't have to be a master of a million voices to be successful. I do more work commercially talking like this than I do in any of the character voices that I do. It's because it's all about listening to direction and being able to interpret scripts and copy. If you, you know, I, I joke around, I can talk about things and you think I actually know what I'm talking about. You know, from things that I don't even use and I don't even know what they are because that's the skill. And, and, and that's the credibility factor. So it's about the acting and the interpretation. He, your brother might have two vo voices he does. One is this one, that his normal voice, and one is a slightly lower version of it. That's fine, he can still work like that. So you don't have to try to, oh, can I do this, can I do that, can I imi imitate this? That's, a, that's definitely helpful, but I will say that probably 75% of the commercial voiceovers that I do, and that's really where the money is, as opposed to the anime stuff, <laughs> is this, just talking like this, just so you know.
Thank you. Yeah. The, the best advice is to do an Eric Valen. <laughs> An Eric Stewart impression. <laughs> I actually had that. That's that old joke, you know, that, you know, get me, get me uh, Eric Stewart, and it's get me a young Eric Stewart, and then it's, who's Eric Stewart, Stewart right? right. Uh -huh. Yeah. I actually went to an audition where the breakdown was, we want er an Eric Stewart type, and I said, I'm right here. I'm here. At least hide that from the script, <laughs> you know, which means that they're not going to book me, just so you know, because <laughs> I didn't do a good enough version of myself. <laughs> Yeah, I got that one time for a show. I think it was uh, High School of the Dead, right? They said, we want, we want a Todd Haberkorn type for that role. And I'm like, I walk in there and I go, but I, I, I know Todd. <laughs> and in fact, I can tell you where he is right now. And so it's very, yeah, when you hear that, you ain't getting it. No, there's no way. And you're like, wow, that's crazy. Maybe I should But it's kind of cool to be considered. This is Stuart Erickson. <laughs> it's cool if it's meant in a positive way. Yeah, I uh, guess. Yeah, that's true. All right, good questions. Great. Uh, just the one more thing. I yeah. do think you're awesome, Todd. Yes. I, uh, you are I, very sweet. Thank oh, you. I've got a picture I drew of Lane for you to sign when you're doing Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Hey, I recognize you. You were here before. It's the Owie fan again. Oh, yes. This question <laughs> is for Link. Oh, my. I have to ask. If uh, you were in a locked in a broom closet with Edward Elric and his hands were tied behind his back, what would you do? And if you will, another version with Italy and Germany. You've thought a lot about this one, haven't you? Yes. <laughs> well, as the future future prince of Shing, I would work on Ed like a Kit Kat bar. And as my Italian friend, if I was looking at Germany, I would. Oh, work on his Wiener <laughs> No, you can't do that, he's my friend. I'd probably sit down and play Italian Angry Birds until someone unlocked the door. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Thank you. Well done, well done. <laughs> I, I, I was wondering why you wouldn't want to play a man. Okay. <laughs> do you have a question? Kind of. Come on down. I've been back there trying to figure out if I wanted Todd to Oh, do. God, you have arms. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Yeah. Well, there you go. Wow. Um, it's like, okay, well, that's kind of cool. Oh, stop with that. Yes. So, um, I was back there trying to figure out if I wanted Todd to do Hikaru from Oran House Club, or Death the Kid from Soul Eater, or Alan from The Great Man. I'm just sitting there going, I don't know which one. So, I kind of want you to do Death, the Kid, one of, just one of them. I mean, I guess with him and Patty and all that, it kind of cool. Death, I'm going to take you over to uh, the Black Order, and I'm going to let you meet everybody, like Lena Lee and, and Conda. But wait, what is this place? Welcome to the Host Club! <laughs> Are you kidding me? I can't believe this. Totally unsymmetrical. This Patty transform. <laughs> Thank you. Squirtle. Hello. Um, I'm I'm interested in getting into voice acting myself, and you know some roles would require to either do an accent or change, um, go to a higher or lower pitch. Like, what are some exercises I can do to work on that kind of stuff? Lunges. Lunges. <laughs> the accents accents are very tricky because many people believe that they can do great accents. I know I can. And there are people that yeah. do amazing dialects and accents. Amazing. I truly think with something like like accents and impressions. I think that is some kind of innate talent. I think people have a knack for it, or they don't. Well, there's I mean, that, that's my personal opinion, is that I think people are good at it. The people that I know that can do accents, they could do, if they hear it, they could do practically any accent. I do a mean Thomas Edison. Goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> Cause he's dead! But, but I will I will say this there, there are there are great uh, there are great coaches for that too that also help actors get rid of them as well as 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 help them develop them yeah. um, obviously Brad Pitt didn't go to that one during the Devil's Zone but anyway um, uh, but I will say this uh, I, I mean I I've, I've worked with people that are that are fantastic at doing that stuff okay um, it's great to get another set of ears to listen to what you're doing. Especially if you're doing a demo reel and you say, I do a great British thing, I do a great, you know, uh, 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 Southern thing, whatever it may be, 
get somebody that really, a coach that really understands that stuff so that they can point out the mistakes. I've had demo reels sent to me where I say, you know, your A's aren't flat enough in this thing for your Midwest thing or whatever. I can hear that coming through. Um, now, you might have read my bio. Do you know where I grew up? So all of my friends talk like this. They, they talk like that, that's how, they, that's how I grew up. But all the guys, they, talk, they just talk like that. So that's an accent I can do because those are my friends. But there's guys on stage that will physically do that stuff and do a terrible Brooklyn accent, but because they physically can sell it, you buy it. So now you have to take away the props and close your eyes and say, was that a good New York accent or not? Was that uh, Carroll Gardens, Brooklyn, or was that uh, Bay Ridge? The dialects are that specific. So it's some, you've got to really either be great at it or don't put it on your reel. Yeah. Right. I, a friend of mine one time got, got a demo reel, and she was listening to it, and she thought, this guy can do some really interesting voices. And then she realized that he believed he was doing impressions of, of certain famous people. And, and then she completely discarded it because even though some of the voices were interesting, she realized that he didn't have an ear for it. Well, I mean, he, a, a, he, lot like, times, a lot of times you know, those, those, those characters we pick are hybrids because we don't want to do dead-on impressions. Now, I know you do a lot of impressions. Yeah, but I'm, I'm saying the point of his thing was like, he thought, you know, I'm, I'm doing, uh, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Bill Clinton, I, I didn't hear right. the demo tape, but he thought right. that he was doing impressions of those people, and right. she was not aware that he thought he was doing impressions. So. No, he didn't need to tell her that either. Yeah. <laughs> well, and, 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 well, like you said, that's a great way to come up with new characters. Just try an impression of someone you can't do an impression yeah. of, and you'll get something amazing. Oh yeah. oh, yeah. I mean, and then there's sometimes you you're naturally sound like those characters. My favorite anime of all time was Battle of the Planets. And I play G-Force with my buddies. This is way before your time. You go and you... I'm talking... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right? But you all know who the main voice over for G-Force, who played Mark on there was, was Casey Kasem. So that was something that I could imitate as a kid. That was just naturally a voice that came to me. And that's what Brock is. Because Brock is also Shaggy. <laughs> who's played by Casey Kasem. So, Good it, it's kind of like the same thing for me as a singer. I, I grew up singing along with certain bands and artists because I could, because they were close to my vocal register. And so those became things that I, could, I mastered. It's the same kind of thing. You'd be like, well, can I do this good impersonation? And I don't know how many guys we know that say they can do walking. Right? Of course, Christopher Walken, it's crazy. Right? <laughs> See now, and that's really good. But I'll tell you that everyone is like they do, uh, they, I don't even attempt it. It's not a voice I do. It's not in the, it's not even in my register. You know, the placement. I can't do it. Can you do it? Uh, I don't, I, only when the lights are out. See? <laughs> But see, that's a smart answer. So that's what I'm saying. Either, you know, and yes, that's another thing is I like, I like you find your own version of these guys when you come close to the impersonation if you're not doing it dead on. So there you go. I'm doing this I don't case. do impersonations because I know that that is not, I don't have an ear for that. I'm pretty good with accents, but I, I, don't, I don't think that I do impersonations, so I don't even try to. I was, uh, so, no. With accents, I, I've uh, over the years I've learned a lot of accents and, and how to do them, um, because occasionally, especially with theater, you will be using accents. But um, I never thought that I would really use the Asian accents very much. And when I first started doing audiobooks, first one out of the gate, tons of Asian accents. And so I, I started to think back to uh, one of my characters, and like, so half my family is Vietnamese. And they all talk like this, and they, they come in, and they come to the, the, like when you walk into the nail parlor, and you want to get your nail, your eyebrow whacked, you want your whack done? Okay, come on, have a seat, I'll be with you in five minutes. Like, that's how they talk. That's how my uncle talks. My uncle, my aunt, my grandma talks. She's like, very nice, you come here, you're so handsome. That's what my grandma says to me all the time. That's sweet, though. It's very, it's very, it's kind of right. And I'm like, you're my grandma, what's going on? But, um, but, uh, but it's all those accents, you know, you don't really use accents in anime that much unless it's a Italia, but even then those are exaggerated accents because I didn't get Italy the first time through because I thought it was very authentic accents that we needed to do. So I did an authentic German, I did an authentic Italian, and I didn't get the role. When I came back, because I did England. I was England, and I recorded as England the whole show. 
And then they replaced England, and then they needed a replacement for Italy. And so, uh, so then I came in and auditioned for it, and the director's like, okay, give us, give us an Italian accent. And I go, okay, I mean, do you want authentic or do you want goofy silly? And he's like, goofy silly. And I go, it's gonna be my Mario. And then he's like, okay, well, let's hear, we'll give, give you your Mario. And then that's why I was like, oh, whoa, 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 it's a me, your Mario. And so they were like, perfect, that's it. I'm like, Wait, really? I was just kidding around. And then I became, I got the Italy role in Italian. So, I mean, very rarely will you use accents in anime, especially. But, I mean, there are times. Because there's a ton of Italians in Texas as reference. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I've, I've actually run into Italians that, that come up to me and they go, we've seen the show, we've seen Italian. And I was like, oh, okay. And they're like, no, we love it. We think it's great. We're like, okay, sure. Oh, thank you. But I'm going to break your legs. Yeah. <laughs> Good questions, good. So listen to other people, copy other people, play around with it, you know? Do impressions of other people's impressions, do impressions of friends and family. If someone starts talking, just start you know, mimicking or copying what they're saying, and your ear and your mouth will soon find it easier to make that kind of thing happen. All right, you have another question? Finn? Uh, Cyclops? Got that one eye that looks at me. Yeah. Crazy guy. Hey, my eye. name's Evan, if you if you don't know already, but hey Evan. In hey, Brock's Evan. voice. No. Tell me in Brock's voice how you're going to ride out Frankenstorm this week. Oh. Well, the cool thing about that is I know a couple of girls that live in New York who live in very, very safely built buildings that are sturdy. So I was gonna come over with some rice balls. And, um... They're they, jelly, I thought those were jelly donuts. No, they're really rice balls. And, because it's New York, they, they can a, at least eat Asian food there. Um, but you know what? They're probably not going to let me in, so I'll probably be blown out to sea. But at least that's kind of what I'm looking for. <laughs> so, nice. so what are you going like, to have with you to protect yourself from the rain? Well, let me uh, see here. Yes! Yes! I'll just use my trusty frying pan Woo! as a drying pan! Thank you. You're welcome. You have made this entire con. Well, if you can explain to me why that's the everyone's favorite proc line, then uh, you will answer the <laughs> hundred million dollar question there. Thank you. Very good. This this is going on YouTube. Of course it is. <laughs> Hopefully my, my, my NC-17 joke will not. <laughs> yes. All right, another question. Yes. Make the little thing ask it. Hey, Ed. <laughs> Good. You're even shorter than I remember, Ed. Yeah. Wow. That, that's a uh, nutrient uh, yeah. deficiency. Yeah. Make, make, make it ask the question. It's life size. <laughs> there you go. Uh, if, if, if Ed, um, uh, uh, Ed's on height disability. <laughs> if Ed were locked in a closet again, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, if Ed were what? If Ed were a prostitute, how much would I If Ed were a prostitute, how much would I be willing to pay for him? Oh. He's right there. <laughs> <laughs> how much would I pay for that right there? He may be cheap, but he's not free. Oh. Ayo! Um, let's see. <laughs> um, I, I, I would pay a Coke and a smile. That's how much I would pay for, for the ML work prostitution, I guess. How did this become an 18 and over panel? Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's younger here in Florida. For, for, oh, I, don't, I don't know. You just can't serve alcohol when you're... Uh, yeah, you can't <laughs> serve alcohol, church. yeah. Thank, thank you for your uh, 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 prostitution questions, I guess. I, I, hope I, I hope I answer them for you. Thank you for your service. Uh, 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 anyway. Right, does anyone else have a question? I do. Yes. Where, oh, you're right there. I was like, there's someone through her voice. Hey, Sarge, what's our next plan for invading Pico Pond? Uh, the next plan for invading Pico Pond. I'm glad you asked because I was sitting here stumped on how to build this Gundam. I think what we need to do 
is when the next episode of Walking Dead comes on, we eat all the characters, assume their roles, and then get people to do whatever we want because everyone loves that show! That's what I think we should do.